Okay, guys, look out below. Roy, my oldest brother, grinned as he somersaulted off the boulder and into the lake below. I don't know why she's here. Mom's eyes bore into the back of my girlfriend of three years, Heidi, who was already in the water. Deal with it, Mom. I proposed, she said yes, so technically she's a part of the family. I ran towards the lake, not realizing that going into that lake would change my life forever. If you want to see how my life changed, keep watching. My story gets a bit crazy. You see, that's the last memory I ever had. This story is based off of everything in this notebook. That day, I swam around under the water and didn't realize how far out I ended up when I surfaced for air. The last thing I heard was the engine of a jet ski before I was not unconscious. I woke up a few hours later in a hospital bed. Where am I? I tried to focus my eyes on the objects in the room. Thank God, Gregory, get the doctor, Dad exclaimed. Dr. McPhee walked into the room and greeted everyone. While chatting with me, I noticed a concerned look on his face. What's the matter, Doc? You have a concussion, which is usual for someone who has had a head injury. Dr. McPhee walked out of the room and re-entered a few minutes later with a notebook and a pen. Aaron, take this. I want you to start keeping a journal. Why would he need to keep a journal? Mom asked. Because we aren't sure how extensive his injuries are yet, and we can only know this after a few days of observation. I took Dr. McPhee's advice and jotted down a few notes in the notebook. Around 2 a.m., I flipped through the notebook and felt sick to my stomach as I read its content. I couldn't remember anything. I had amnesia, and my memory didn't retain information for more than a few hours a day. When my family arrived the next day, Dr. McPhee told them of his new findings. I was discharged a few days later. It was weird that I remembered everything up until the accident, but anything after, my brain rejected it. It was almost as if my brain was full and couldn't store any more information. With a lot of writing, I was able to understand my everyday life. It felt as though things were getting back to normal despite my lack of short-term memory. What is she doing here? I hissed at mom as Heidi and my brothers stood a few feet away mingling at our annual family reunion. Mom smiled. Who, Jasmine? I thought I'd invite her. I haven't seen her in a while and I wanted to catch up. Mom walked away. Jasmine was my ex, the only girl mom ever liked. During the night, I kept conversation light and didn't get into too many details about anything with anyone. Are you doing okay? Heidi smiled. So far so good, but I could be better. I kissed her. Hey lover boy, why don't you help your favorite aunt to bring out more drinks? Heidi giggled. <laughs> sure auntie, I'm right behind you. As I entered the house to get the third case of drinks, Jasmine walked up to me and kissed me. What are you doing? Heidi's voice came from behind me. We were kissing. What did it look like? Jasmine looked at Heidi slyly. Heidi jumped on Jasmine and they began to fight. It wasn't long before some family members started to gather. Finally, Roy and I were able to separate them. Heidi and I left soon after. She told me she overheard mom and Jasmine planning to break us up. I told Heidi that she was the only woman I wanted and she didn't have to worry. Later that week, a few college buddies came to hang out at my place. We'd just order a few pizzas as we'd discuss a new project they wanted me to lead since I was now unemployed due to my accident. Okay, well, the guys and I were thinking that now is the best time to start our gym and, well, this will help you get back into the employment field as well, Raul said. By the end of the night, we worked out which building would be best, the type of equipment needed and the legal ramifications of things. They handed me a suitcase with $250,000 to get things started, since we wanted to purchase the property immediately. And don't worry, we'll call in every day to make sure things stay on track. James patted my back. How about we grab a few drinks and then we'll call it a night? Keston added. I agreed. I left the briefcase in my office and we left. I returned a few hours later and heard talking coming from my office. I pushed open the door. Mom and Heidi both turned in my direction. What are you guys doing in here? I came over to drop off a casserole and I heard noises coming from your office. When I came in, I noticed this hooligan taking money from the briefcase. You are such a liar. I came over to spend some time with you and I heard your mom on the phone. She said she needed the money to pay off the second mortgage. Mom, did you take out a second mortgage? Yes, but... Why? After your dad did that eye surgery and was out of a job about two years ago, things were tough. But here you are, nothing but a disgusting, lying, two-timing... Aaron, you better put this tramp on a leash. How dare you allow her to speak to your mother in such a manner? Heidi, please stop. This is my mother. There is a better... You know what, Aaron? I'm sick and tired of you taking her side. 
I watched as she removed the engagement ring from her finger and placed it on the table. Now you and your mom can get married and live happily ever after. Heidi stormed off. I was about to go after her when mom stopped me. Let her go, Aaron. It's for the best. That night I wrote about it in my notebook after mom left and I squeezed Heidi's engagement ring in my hand. Later I decided to question mom about the engagement ring. You see, I'd forgotten everything already, so I guess that's why mom said, Well, Aaron, Heidi stopped by last night. She told you that she found someone else and you will never be enough for her. After mom left, I went to the office and read about what happened between Heidi and I the day before. Why would mom lie? Why does she hate Heidi so much? I decided to pay Heidi a visit. As I approached her apartment door, I saw another guy coming out of her apartment. He kept his head down as he passed. I knocked on the door. Patrick, did you forget something? Heidi froze when she realized it was me and not Patrick. Hi. She folded her arms. I didn't expect to see you here. We need to talk about yesterday. May I come in? She stepped aside and I entered her apartment. Over the next few hours, Heidi and I had a long talk about our relationship and she accepted the ring once again. I also promised her that I'd speak with my mother. As I promised, I spoke with mom and she agreed to give Heidi a chance. I suggested to Heidi that maybe mom and my younger sister, Roxanne, help her with the wedding. At first, she was reluctant, but eventually she agreed. This seemed to be going well between mom and Heidi, until one afternoon, Heidi called me angrily. Your mother is a monster! Wait, Heidi, what happened? Your mom and Roxanne went with me to try on my wedding dress. I had to stop off at your apartment to collect my red purse. I decided to buy us some donuts from the cafe on the corner. When I returned, Roxanne was trying on my dress. My wedding dress! My dress is ruined! How could she? Heidi began to cry. I told her to stay there. I was on my way. If I was a cartoon character, you'd see the steam coming out of my ears as I hopped into the car and drove home. A few minutes later, I unlocked the door to my apartment. Where's Heidi? Mom and Roxanne looked up from the TV. She said she wasn't feeling well and went to lay down. We decided to keep her company until you arrived. Roxanne babbled. I walked over to the TV, switched it off and glared at Mom and Roxanne. Roxanne, she told me that you tried on her dress and ruined it. How could you try on her wedding dress? Roxanne tried to speak, but I silenced her. Whether you like it or not, Heidi and I are going to get married. I think it's time you both left. I walked to the apartment door and opened it. Mom and Roxanne exited without a word. During the rehearsal dinner a few weeks later, which was held in Roy's beautiful backyard under the tents, nothing went right. The cake samples for the wedding never showed up and neither did the caterers. Roy suggested that we purchase Chinese food and use paper plates. Sometime during the night, someone lit one of the decorative plants inside the tent on fire. Luckily, we were able to get it under control before the entire tent burned. After that incident, I spoke with Roy and we decided to call it a night. The next evening, I called my family together at my parents' home. I told them I had an announcement to make. Once the family was gathered, I turned on the TV and played the DVD. The longer the video played, the tenser the atmosphere in the room became. The video showed mom canceling the food and the cake as well as setting fire to the plant. Once the video was over, dad looked at mom, shook his head and walked out of the room. Roy suggested that he and the others leave so mom and I could talk privately. Aaron, I'm doing this for your own good. Heidi isn't who you think she is. No mom, you're not the person I thought you were. I'm gonna marry Heidi and there's nothing you or anyone in this family can do about it. I walked out of the house. I called Heidi and we eloped that same evening. We decided to spend the night at my place and the next day we'd look for a nice place to honeymoon. But my happily ever after ended before it could begin. By the time I woke up the next morning, Heidi was already gone and with the remaining money from the briefcase. I checked my accounts and everything I had was gone. That night, my parents dropped by to apologize, but when they saw me, they knew something was wrong and I told them what happened. I still have a few buddies at the police station. Let me give them a call and see if we can catch Heidi. Dad exited the room to make the call. Mom sat next to me. There was a reason I never liked Heidi. She was an intern at my job a few years ago. Rumor had it that she used men and as soon as she got what she wanted, she'd leave. But you came to the office one day to drop off some paperwork for me and she told me if I didn't introduce the both of you that she'd make my life a living hell. Mom inhaled deeply before she continued. Heidi saw me and Mr. Ford in a very compromising position in his office one evening. She said she had pictures and videos and she wasn't afraid to use them. What? Mom and I spun around. You and Mr. Ford had an affair? Henry, it's not what you think. Oh no, it's exactly what I think. 
You sacrificed our son so you wouldn't have to face the consequences of your actions. How much more selfish could you get? Dad turned to me. Aaron, I'm so sorry you have to go through this. I'll call you tomorrow, but for now, I need to get some air. Dad walked out of the apartment, followed by Mom. A few days later, Heidi was caught with Patrick. Most of the money was still in the briefcase, so I was able to finish establishing the business with my friends. I got a divorce and mom and dad are on rocky territory, and honestly, I don't know if their marriage will make it. As for me, I still use my notebooks to keep track of things. I wish things turned out differently, but hey, sometimes you have to use the lessons in life to make better choices in your future.